It's the central limit theorem. That sounds like it's important. It's important. Yeah, this is kind of an important lesson. Yes. Uh, and, you know, I don't know, the central, like something that's central should be core to our beliefs. And this is kind of a big deal for statistics. So yeah. we're going to talk about that. Um, yeah. So our learning objective is to estimate a sampling distribution using simulation. Estimate a sampling distribution. Is estimate. Estimate. Yep. Why just estimate, I wonder? Well, because we're still stuck with the idea that we cannot necessarily survey or gather information about everything in most populations. Sure. So, yep. so remember that a sampling distribution is a statistic. Wait, wait. What's a statistic, Mr. Bobby? That's like um, um, when we take a, a subgroup of everybody and then find the mean or the standard deviation. It's not the actual population mean or standard deviation. Or proportion. A proportion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Proportion, Remember, yeah. statistic sample, statistic sample, SS. A sampling distribution is a statistic uh, of a statistic is the distribution of values for the statistic for all possible samples of a given size from a given population. What? I have no idea what you just said. I read a definition and you were supposed to bobbyize it. Bobbyize it. Oh, okay. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to try to find the a mean or sample or mean or standard deviation for a subgroup. So like I can't I cannot actually find out what everybody in the state of Arkansas believes about COVID-19 or about, you know, Thanksgiving, whether they like turkey or not. So I can't survey everybody in the state. So I take a sample and I find the per percentage or the proportion of people who like um, the, like turkey, for example. So because we're recording this for over Thanksgiving break. Um, so if I take a sample of 100 people in Arkansas and ask them if they like serve it, uh, like turkey, I use that as a statistic that represents the entire state of Arkansas. Okay, I can't, like, because I just can't. I don't have enough time and they won't Do you answer. like turkey? I like turkey. Yeah. I don't like turkey. You don't like turkey? Are you Not a ham? Much. Yeah, you're just, you're just the green beans. You probably just sit there and eat the... the... No, I eat all the foods. I like ham, okay. Um, okay. We usually have also have like smoked chicken, and I usually eat the smoked chicken because I like chicken more than turkey. Yeah. All right, the central limit theorem, the CLT, states that when the sample size is sufficiently large, a sampling distribution of the mean of a random variable will be approximately normally distributed. And this is where we've kind of like thrown 30 at you before. That's not a guarantee, but that's like a good number to know. Sufficiently large. So I I realize that if I only survey 30 Arkansans about Turkey, I may be off, but I'd be better off than if I surveyed only two. Okay. Like the two of us that are talking about Turkey here, you would think that 50% of people in this state don't like Turkey. Well, I'm right. not sure about that. I'm not okay. curious about what that actually is. I don't know. The central limit theorem does require that the sample values are independent of each other and that n is sufficiently large. Okay. Are you trying a turkey? I'm trying. <laughs> he has a new toy. He has a new toy and so he's wanting to play. That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. um, so independent, Mr. Bobby, what does that mean? That means the fact that I like turkey has nothing to do with the fact that you like turkey? That's right. We're, we have no influence on each other's taste buds. We have influence on each other, but not on our taste. Uh, yeah. Now, if he had made fun of me previously for food choices and I was sensitive to that, I don't know that that would be independent. <laughs> but, okay. Anyways. All right. A, random, a randomization distribution is a collection of statistics generated by simulation, assuming known values for the parameters. What? So, um, we're going to, I don't know, let's see, we're going we're gonna to take and randomize the people and select them randomly to try to get a estimate or a, to use it as a represent, representation of the entire population. Miss Young and I are from Arkansas and we are, um, you know, part of that 30, but we're not a big enough and we're not random enough. We're, we have some things in common. Um, that we don't fully represent the state of Arkansas. So we would need to include more people and more randomization than just two 
geeky math teachers who talk, sitting there talking about turkey. Okay, for a randomized experiment, this means repeatedly, randomly reallocating or reassigning the response uh, values to treatment groups. So this is just more random. People, don't pick the same people over and over. Yep. Okay. The sampling distribution of a statistic can be simulated by generating repeated samples from a population. You're going to do it over and over, over and over and over. The more data you collect, <laughs> the more accurate you're going to be. That's right. Okay. So a quick reminder as we go into this, notation matters. Oftentimes you're going to get problems thrown at you where they're going to tell you P equals or P hat equals, mu equals or X bar equals, sigma equals or S equals. And you're going to have to know whether you're given population or you're given sample, okay? So if P hat estimates P, that means P hat is the I have no sample. <laughs> it's the sample proportion. Yes, if and X is... bar estimates mu, then X bar is the sample mean. If S estimates sigma, S is the sample standard deviation. Okay, so that's important to remember as we go through this. Notation is a thing, and you have to be able to tell the difference between them. And we're very, very unlikely to ever know the actual true population proportion or the mu or the standard deviation. Right. We just can't, ver I mean, I know you think you can, but you really can't. Okay, so let's look at a not very interesting example. Are you ready? I am. So they just took the unit for exam and we wanna know how it goes or how it went, excuse me. Um, so, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so we're gonna take some completely made up data. Let's say only four people submitted this test. I think that's probably how many have submitted it at this point. Oh, uh, wow. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> okay, so here's what well, we wanna do. But your grades were better than that. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Today we will be yeah. taking Today we'll be taking a sample from a population. Okay, so let's say our population is just these four numbers, 60, 70, 80, 90. We want to take a sample. It's kind of a small thing because why would we? Because it'd be easy to estimate. And the reason is because it's going to make things easier for us to understand. Okay, so we're going to use the average from the sample to estimate the average for the population. Okay, we're going to use the average from the sample to estimate the average for the population. Okay, so, so let's just- four, This is our sample. We can find, we can find it's- This is our population right now. I mean, okay, that's our population, okay. Yeah. So we, first thing, let's just make a dot plot of the distribution of the population because we can. What does it look like, Mr. Bobby? Is it very interesting? Nope, there'll be a dot above 60, 70, 80, and 90, just plain old boring. Okay. So, and Uniform, as we call it. Right, and because I could at this point, what's the mean of this population? It would be right there at a good old 75. I don't even need a calculator to do that. <laughs> right. Um, I could, of course, add them up, divide by four, but I think it's pretty obvious that the mean here is 75. Okay. So, again, in a normal problem, you would not be able to do this step. Okay. Right. Well, you might be able to, but it would take a long time. Yeah. So, what, now here's what I want to do. People? What? There's like 3 million something people in Arkansas or more? Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. There's okay, lots. so now we're going to figure out all possible samples of size 2. Okay, so I've so got four we numbers. Clarified. We got these four people and we're so lazy we can't even look at all four. We're going to pick two of them, but we're going to randomly pick any two. So I can pick these two or these two or these two. You know, I'm going to take a sample of two of them and then get a, a mean from that sample. So, right. I, so I, could take, I could take 60 and 70 and get the mean of 65. That's one way it could happen. Okay. But she's going to list them out. Yeah. So I could pick 60 and 70. I get a mean of 65. I could pick 60 and 80. I'd get a mean of 70. I could pick 60 or not and 90. That would give me a mean of 75. I could pick, picking them randomly out of the hat. I could pick 
70 and 80. Now I'm figuring out all possible samples. Okay. So I can do this. If I have a bunch, I'm going to do this randomly, right? If I have a whole bunch, I'm going to think, okay, well, I don't, I can't get them all. So I'm just going to pick random. Now for this particular one, we're doing them all because we can, because I set it up so that we could do them all and not be here for eight years. All right. What comes after 60 and 90? Oh, 70 and 80, then 70 and 90, and then 80 and 90. Did, you, did I get all possibles? Yes, you did. Okay. And again, we're only faking it right now so you can see some, a key point here and it's going to come out in a second. Yep. All right. Now let's say we take a dot plot of all the uh, sample mean size two. Okay. So did I have to expand my bar graph? No. Still from 60 to 90. I plot all those points. Okay. Now I have more dots. A single dot here is going to be representing one sample of two with a mean of, in this case, 85. Okay, so a single dot now isn't a test. A single dot is the average of two tests. Does that make sense? It does to me. Okay. So this, this guy right here is that guy right there. Okay. Yep. But we're only plotting those sample means. And what happened to those dots? What's good and what's bad? Well, okay. so what was the mean of the population again? Will you remind me? It was 75 before we said that. And if we look right here at 75, what has happened? Nothing. We still have nothing. It's still clustered near 75. Like the center is the same, right? But what happened to the where were we out to before? We had a 60 and a 90. Notice we don't have them anymore. Okay, so now we're thinking, okay, we're noticing that the range has decreased. It was 60 and 90, and now it's decreased to, uh, sorry, the range was 30, right? Because 60 minus 90. And now the range has decreased to what? To 20. To 20. Yeah. So 20. So we've tightened our data and it's still clustering around the center. Which what is do we good. call range in statistics? Standard deviation is so because we're talking about means, we have to talk about standard deviation. Now the standard deviation of these numbers that I have boxed over here has gotten smaller. So we right. still are representing the same people, but we've got a better sense smaller standard deviation or less variability yeah by taking so, that example. yeah and it's important guys like as we're going through this we really want our test statistic to be as accurate as possible okay we want it to be as close to the mean as possible and we don't want a lot of variability in our sample means because when we pick one we want it to be as accurate as possible now of course we're always looking at the collection Say, okay, how, you know, how accurate do we feel like this is? Can we do something with it, right? Um, but in this case, I feel like this is good. We kept the mean. Yep. And we shrank variability. So is that a good thing? Yes, that's good. I mean, I'm going to have less error in my sample. So, you know, we're not going to do this, but if we would have sampled three of the four, we'd still, get, we would get even tighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, granted, we can do this because she only started with a population of four. Okay? <laughs> when we start with a population of three million, we're never going to list all the possibilities. No. Okay? So we're, but the idea is still valid. If we sample, we're still going to keep this, theoretically, we're going to keep the same mean, but we're going to shrink the variability as we up the number of yeah. samples, the number of items in our sample. And that's the central limit. That's the idea behind the central limit theorem. Right, exactly right. Okay, so in reality, let's say um, there are lots of people who took this test, more than even just the 21 of you guys, okay? So let's say there's 85 people that took this test at Lakeside. This time we're gonna take a random sample of five students and find the average. So now we're gonna take 85 test scores, put them in a box, mix them up, and pull out five scores and find the average, right? Okay. Put them back, mix them up, pull out five scores, find the average, put them back, mix them up, 
plot five scores, find the average. We're gonna do that over and over and over and over again. Let's say we do that 30 times. And this is the result of that 30 times I did that. What does a single dot represent, Mr. Robbie? It represents one, the, the mean of the five that you pulled out one time at each time. So now guys, this is when statistics starts to become a little more challenging because you're going to want to think to yourself, well, the dot represents a test score of 65 or a test score of 75, but you have to know what you're looking at. We're not, we're no longer looking at a single score, a single person, a single thing as a dot. Okay. This is now the, yes, the sample of five scores uh, average. And it, yeah. And then it's mean. Yes. X bar now. And we're looking at X bar, not mu because this is a sample. So I should actually say it's the X bar. It's the X bar of a sample of five scores. That's probably yeah. a better way to say it. Yeah. So understand when you're looking at something, what am I actually looking at in this case? Okay, so here we are, we've got a sampling. Why do we have a sampling? Because I didn't wanna take the time to look at 85 different test scores. Yeah, so looking at our dot plot, what do you think the true test average of the unit for exam is? If we just look at it, I mean, it's still in that 75-ish range, maybe a little bit higher, I might say 76, 77, but it's still pretty daggum close as, as grandpa used to say. <laughs> so okay. when I look at this graph and I think, okay, if I want a true test average, a true test average would be mu because that would be my population. I'm now using my means to determine something that's true overall about the test itself, okay? And so I'm saying, okay, then I think according to this, it looks like mu is approximately 76%. And again, even with 85, it'd still be a pain in the neck to get my calculator out and average 85 test scores when I could just do it with a sample. Um, but in reality, in most applications, we have way more than 85 in our population. Yeah. So let's say 85 students took the exam. A sampling distribution shows the means calculated from all the possible samples of size five from the population. Okay. If I were to call this a sampling distribution, that's what it would mean. Okay. And so is the question becomes like, is the dot plot above here an actual sampling distribution? What do you think? Well, it shows the means calculated, but it's not all of them. So right? how many would there be? <laughs> there were, I don't know, you gave me 30, but I'm thinking there's a more than 30. There's more than 30. And guys, I want yeah, you to really, bit. really wrap your head around this, okay? We're only talking about 85 people in this population, okay? 85 people. How many combinations could I make of size five? That's the question you should be asking yourself. How many combinations can I make of size five? Do we have a method of calculating combinations of size five, Mr. Bobby? Yeah, there's something called com combinations, which you might've seen in prior statistics work. There's like, and there's on Sonic, think about, I always think about this in terms of Sonic. When you go there and they have like 72 million flavor combinations for whatever, all the different things. And Sonic doesn't even have 85 um, flavor combinations. So if we do a combination of this, we would, if she were going to try to do what she did with the four, remember when she only had four, she was able to find all of the possibilities because there's only four of them. But when they're even going to a reasonable, 85 is pretty reasonable. There are classes at Lakeside that have 85 students. I've taught 85 students in the same subject. And if I were trying to sample all of, you know, make all the possible samples of size five out of a group of 32 million, so we could do what she did earlier, it would take 30, over 32 million. I ain't got no time for that. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't got no time for 32 million possibilities. Right. Even though the computer would take a while. Yeah. Um, but all of them are going to be in the ballpark of the mean, and it's going to be pretty uh, close to have a smaller standard deviation. Right. And if we, yep. So. Okay, so 
And just out of curiosity, Mr. Robbie, what if instead of taking a sample of size five, I took a sample of size 10, what would happen? That would give you fewer possibilities because you're using up more each time. But, and it would also, I mean, you'd still be near the mean and your standard deviation, that graph would close in closer. So it wouldn't be as spread, even as spread out as this one is. Right. So going from five to 10 makes it the same mean, but makes it tighter. Right. Okay, let's say Lake Hamilton gives the exact same exam we do. We take a random sample of five of their scores, find the average, and that one average is 65%, okay? So now we're just doing one. So that would be like one dot on our graph right here, right? One dot on our graph right here. Is this convincing evidence that Lake Hamilton students overall did worse than students at our school, at our school, excuse me? So they're dot would be right there but it's just one we have one yeah we have one there so there's a i mean it's not that out of the possibility but of the 30 that we have gathered from lakeside 29 of them were higher than that so we have a one in 30 chance of getting a score like that and that's a pretty small problem what is one in 30 you have that calculated 3.3 percent 3.3 percent and remember we've talked about if something happens that would happen less than 5% of the time, we get suspicious. So since this is something that happens less than 5% of the time, it would make me suspicious and it would be at least evidence that there is a difference. All right. right. And so your answer to a question like this, guys, um, sounds something like, yes, based on our sampling distribution, there is a <laughs> 1 in 30 or 3.3% chance of getting 65% or less purely by chance, like we did just right here, because purely by chance means what, Mr. Bobby? It, it just by dumb luck, or it can happen, and this yeah. could have happened, but it would only have happened by dumb luck in Mr. Bobbyisms only 3% of the time. Yeah, um, and of course, that would have the same sample mean. Okay, so that's what we're saying, like, that all the comparisons have to be exactly the same. The mean would have to be the same and everything, okay? So as you're looking at this and making comparisons, make sure in your head you remember, like, I've got to compare everything as they are. Okay, so for this lesson, you're uh, a Google Doc assignment, which um, you're going to have to make dot plots. So I suggest you either work on a piece of notebook paper or print this, and Mr. Bobby's going to draw you the 47th turkey in this lesson. So, guys. You know what you should be drawing Christmas trees for them because they're past Thanksgiving. They're ready for Christmas, Christmas, or whatever it is that my lovely people here celebrate for the holiday. Oh, there we go. Yeah, right. Don't we have to like do? <laughs> I love Wait, it. There's a nine on that or something. Okay. Um, I think that's perfect. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.